Exercise 18, Sol SolidWorks 2018. In this exercise, we're gonna take a look at uh, making this symmetric bottle using the sweep tool, as well as a couple additional features. We'll see how to uh, generate this. As you can see on here, some of the other things we will look at are variable radius filleting. We'll look how to sweep along a guide curve. And threads are actually covered in exercise 13. So if you want to go back and see how the threads were created, I would go uh, take a look at the end of exercise 13 and it show, should show you how to do that. Okay, and so this is our goal. Let's begin. Start a new part file. And I'm working in IPS or inch pound second. And so Let's go ahead and we're going to begin on our front plane, start a sketch. The first thing we need to do is construct the height of the bottle or give it, let's call it a path. So I just went ahead and drew a line. I'm going to go to Smart Dimension and I'm going to dimension it at 10 inches. Hit your F key on your keyboard for zoom to fit if you like. And then hit Exit Sketch or Rebuild. Either one is fine. The next item is again on the front plane. We're going to start a new sketch. And let's start with the center line. We have to draw a guide curve for the what how the shape of the front of the bottle would look, if from, looking from the front perspective. So draw out a line, a, hor a horizontal center line at the bottom, and let's dimension it. And this will give us our base. So whatever this is, this is half the width of the base. So we'll go with um, three inches. So the overall width of the base will be six inches. Now. Let's go over here to the spline tools, hit the little arrow to the right and find the style spline. Move your pointer over the endpoint or vertex of that horizontal center line you just drew and click and drag straight up about uh, a quarter of the way to the height. Click, drag this in and give it a, uh, again, you could do this as a free form type of entity. Um, and then get this maybe even a little bit higher than the path that we have drawn there and click and now hit escape. Now once you hit escape on your keyboard you'll see you could grab this and drag these and adjust them and adjust the curvature of your spline. You may discover though you might not have added enough points so what you could do is right click on the uh, anywhere on the spline or on one of the center lines and find insert control vertex and select a point nearby on the center line that you'd like to break up. So maybe I want one there and one here. So I just clicked twice. And now you could grab those points and adjust them. And so now you have more control over your design. And so once you get a profile that you like, let's go ahead and dimension this top point to this uh, path click and let's make that one inch and what we're doing this for is in, in my design I want to have it come to a circle at the base it's going to be an ellipse but at the very top we'll have it go go to a circle which is actually it's just going to be an ellipse but it will um, convert or it will look like a circle as the points will be equal on all four sides okay so once you get your bottle stylized feel free to pause the video and take some time and get it the way you would like to see it and then you could go ahead and hit exit sketch or rebuild. Now let's go to the right plane and start a sketch. Hit your space bar and go to the right view orientation. Let's go to the center line tool again. And at the origin, click and drag a horizontal center line. And then let's smart dimension it at 1.5. So the side profile, the right profile, will overall be three inches wide. Now go back to the spline tool, hit the little arrow to the right of it, and select style spline. And let's proceed with the same method. Drag this straight up, click, and start sloping it in. And you might have to zoom out a little bit and bring it to about the same height. After a couple clicks here, you'll see maybe you might need to add some additional points like we did before. So it's a right click anywhere on the center line or the curve and insert control vertices 
and click on a couple places you'd like to add some. Again, you could add more. Um, I'm a believer most of the time less is better. If you can help it. it starts to get a little too complex at times. And let's go ahead and dimension that point to this line up here and again make it one inch. Now if we wanted to exactly be a perfect circle then we would make them the same height, eight inches in height, which we could do if you wanted. You could click on this and this and then go ahead and put in eight inches and then be exactly that. I'm gonna go ahead and just leave it, to my, uh, I'm sorry, 10 inches, not eight inches. And so I'm gonna leave it a little bit higher though. Okay, <clears throat> and again, once you've got what the way you'd like to see it, actually I'm gonna adjust this a little bit more. There are tools too for taking a look and highlighting areas that you may not find desirable. You could always right click on the spline and show curvature combs. And here you can see the curvature as it highlights it. And these are tools that an industrial designer would probably use to evaluate the curve and the smoothness. And if you don't want to see it, you could just click on it and turn off show curvature combs. And there's other options in there as well. Okay, once again, once you got what you wanted, go ahead and hit rebuild or exit sketch. And let's hit our space bar and go to isometric or control seven, it's a fast key. Now we're gonna go ahead and select the top plane and start our sketch. Use the ellipse tool and locate the origin first where the path is mounted, click and drag this out. Now we don't actually want it to snap to this point, and I'll show you why in a second, because what we need to assign to this instead is actually a, not a coincident relationship, but you'll see in just a second what type of relationship we'll have. It's gonna be what's called a Pierce relationship. But drag it out a little bit farther along out there, and then the same with this. The only reason why is because it might be difficult to select it over the other point of the end of the curve. So once you get those, those points there, now we could go ahead and hit Escape Control select the point on the ellipse, and then here's the key, do not select the point, or the end point I should say, at the end of this spline. Select the spline as a whole. So click on the spline, anywhere on the spline, preferably down lower uh, so you don't accidentally click on anything else. And then once you have those two over on the left, you should see, you could really control by the way, you should see Pierce. Go ahead and select Pierce. If Pierce isn't there, hit Escape a couple times and try selecting those, that point and the curve again. All right, we'll do it again over here. Let's click on this point, hold Control and select the curve and find Pierce. Now what that does is if you just, somewhere in the algorithm, it's my understanding, is that if you made them coincident, it would just, it's kind of like just, if you're a railroad train on a track, it's like just, being parked at the end or wherever you parked it. The idea is that by selecting the curve, I guess you could look at this as an analogy, is you're instructing that point to follow the curve or the track. So that's kind of the idea, maybe how to remember how to do that. Okay, uh, go ahead and hit exit, uh, exit sketch at this point. And now uh, we're gonna go ahead, let me label these just uh, to show you this, first of all, the sketch one that we added, if you click once on it, release it and click again after waiting a moment, you should be able to edit that text. There we go. And let's go ahead and call that the path. Now you don't have to name them like this. This is more just for instructional purposes. Now this sketch two, you can see that's the guide curve. It's on the left hand side but it's gonna show the front of the bottle. So we could click on that sketch too. Let's name that the front guide. And then sketch three, click on that. And that's gonna be the right hand side guide. So right guide. Oh, forgot the T. And then sketch four is the profile. Again, you don't need to label them there. It's nice to label them, but you don't have to. Okay, now that we have that, let's go ahead and hit rebuild just to make sure everything's not selected, any, nothing is selected in advance. Go to features, and now we could go to sweat boss base. Click on that. 
So from here, the first thing it's looking for, you'll see if you move your pointer over here, is the profile. So the profile was the ellipse. The next thing it's looking for is the path. The path was the vertical line. And the path basically tells you at this point, because you're using guide curves, is telling it how high or how far to go. Once the path stops, no matter how far those guide curves go beyond it, it stops at where the path stops. Okay, now you could click on the guide curves here. Click there. And the guide curves always have to be separate sketches. Just remember that you can't integrate the guide curves in one single sketch. In this case, it would have been impossible anyhow, but there will be times you can make additional guide curves. Um, and sometimes you might accidentally put them in the same grouping or same sketch. You can't do that. Okay, and so now we can see it's taken our profile and we can hit the green check and now we have our bottle design. And again, mine is not particularly a nice looking bottle. I'm just throwing this together kind of free form. All right, the next thing we're going to do, I want to show you how to put in those um, curves around here. Let's go back to that bottle there and this feature right here. Okay, You'll see I, I've done a couple variations of it here. I actually made what's called configurations, which we have an exercise. I believe it's exercise uh, 15, 16 or something like that. But here you can see here's a variation of that same design. And configurations are very nice because you could actually have the same part and have different features in each one. Okay, so anyhow, let's go back to the model we we're working on. And to do this, let's select the front plane, start a sketch, and then we'll go to the front view orientation. We're going to use the standard spline tool. You could use the other, uh, the other spline if you like the style spline. And I'm just going to have this come out here and drop in and somewhat follow the contour and then wrap around and then get it to the center here. And when you infer there, hit escape. Now let's take and draw a center line from the origin to that point and we could actually draw another center line. Or we don't have to do this, but we could draw the center line across horizontal and then make a horizontal relation. Now, I know some of you say, well, you have the drag handles. Um, I do, I've been doing training on this for 21 years. The drag handles for a new student are a little bit difficult to master. So uh, there's plenty of videos out there how to use them. I'm not going to show, show it to you right now. So anyhow, I'm going to go ahead and select these two. And over on the left, you have you can make equal curvature, which basically is kind of like a con continuous curvature, very smooth transition, or what some refer to as C2 or G2 curvature continuous. Uh, or you can make a tangent. Either way is fine. All right. Now that we have that, we could go ahead and mirror it across. I'm going to select this, and then hold Control, and select the vertical center line and go up to mirror entities and it should mirror completely across like such. Okay, once we have that, we could always go and adjust it. Just remember you could go in here and make adjustments if you like. You can see those little drag handles. Um, feel free to tinker with them. I don't go over them right now though. And actually I think I'm gonna have this flare out a little bit more there. Okay, so once you have that, now we could go to insert, curve, and split line. All you have to do is select the body of the bottle and hit the green check mark. And then click off of it and you'll see now it's made, it's broken up those two surfaces using that curve, which now makes us, gives us the ability on like the front plane to draw a profile and sweep it along. So let's select the front plane, start a sketch, Go normal to, or the front orientation. Go to your circle tool and zoom up to one of the points over here. Get on that point. Might take a minute to get to it, but select it. And you could go ahead and dimension this diameter if you like. I'm gonna make a 0.25. And now we could go and hit rebuild. Go to, in, uh, I'm sorry, just go to swept boss base select the circle for the profile and then select this as the path. Now you'll see it's not going to go all the way around 
So um, first of all, you could select bidirectional. That gets it on the back side. And then go to the options menu and select tangent propagation. And to get rid of that little line there, turn on merge tangent. Now, if you're unable to get those, it's possible that you're disconnected on those on those uh, endpoints there, or you didn't apply tangency or curvature continuous on that. So once you got those, you could go ahead and hit the green check mark, and now you have that design like that. Let's go to fill it and put some blends in there. Now I'm going to go with curvature continuous. Those are very smooth transitions or what's known as G2 or C2 depending upon what system you're using. In SOLIDWORKS it's more of a C2 condition and because of the parametrics behind it as far as I, my understanding is. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and uh, we'll leave it at point 0.1 and you could actually select the whole face and you'll see it will put those blends in there. You can hit the green check mark and so now we have that blended. Now let's go ahead and put in a, another type of fillet. Go to fillet and let's use variable size fillet. Select this edge. Now depending upon your geometry, it might be a little bit different from mine. It might be difficult to actually get this fillet in. So be aware um, if you're kind of going free form instead of using the exact dimensions or whatever I've done here, you might have to adjust it, make your fillets maybe smaller. But I'm going to try and go, I'm going to double click on this here and make that 0.5. Now it's kind of hard to double click on, I noticed on this release, I have to double click at the bottom of it. So just be aware that to add that dimension might be a little challenging. Now I'm gonna grab that and drag that out of the way. And now I've got this one here, I'm gonna double click and I'm gonna make this 0.25, hit enter. And then find this quadrant over here, double click. Again, I'm having a little challenge there, double clicking on it, 0.5. And then this last one here, double click, 0.25. Now you could enter these over on the left hand side if you're having a challenge double clicking on those. I'm finding that if I double click near the bottom of the text, it actually seems to work a little bit better. Okay, hit apply. And now you can see the curvature is larger on the sides versus the front. Okay, let's uh, put one up here. Go ahead and select this face. Uh, this edge, go to fill it, and let's do the same thing. Let's click, uh, we'll, won't make it quite as big, and actually it's gonna be reversed. So we'll make it like 0.25 on this one, and then this one we'll make it, uh, this will be maybe a little too dramatic. Come on, there we go. I might only make a 0.375. And then this one here, 0.25, and that one there, 0.375, and hit apply. All right, let's put the neck on the bottle, select the top face, start a sketch, and go to your circle tool and drag out a nice size circle there. I'm gonna go ahead and dimension mine. I'm gonna make it one, one and a half inches. If yours doesn't fit with the fillets you have, then obviously adjust it so it does. Go to Features, Extrude Boss, and 0.75. All right, we're gonna go ahead and shell this. Like I said before, uh, the actual threads are shown in um, exercise 13. So if you go to E13, you can see how to put the threads in. Same method I use. Um, I'm not gonna do that here. But what I would like to show you is how to make a variable wall thickness. So for example, let's say we want this neck reinforced, but the rest of the bottle could be like 30 thousandths thick or something like that. Um, what we can do is we go to shell, specify 0.03 for the bulk of the bottle and select the top face. Now click in this little box here on the left where the pink stripe is and leave it at 0.1 and select just the neck. Now be aware, notice I did not put a a blend in there yet. If you have a blend or a fillet, it doesn't always work. So you have to do it pre-filleting, i.e. like in this corner here. So I have no fillet there, so it should work. So I'm gonna hit apply. And now to verify that, you could go to the section view here, click, 
And here we could see that we have the wall thickness of the neck is 100,000. So then here, obviously, it's much thinner. You could just hit the green, uh, the X, the red X, or if you hit the green check mark, just turn off section view by clicking on it again. Now, this is when you would put in the blend after the fact. Oh, in this case, I just want a constant size and 100,000. Uh, let's go with 0 0.05. That's a little bit of a big size, 0 0.05 there. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and blend this top as well. Okay, now some of you might be wondering how I did the configurations. And like I said, configurations are covered in an earlier chapter in this advanced guide. If you're looking to go to that, the SOLIDWORKS Advanced Manual here, as you can see, we cover equations as well as um, configurations are covered here on, on exercise 16. And in exercise 16, I actually use configurations with the design table. You don't necessarily need to use a design table for configurations. Uh, if this bottle, for example, I want the two vari variants, and let me show that to you again. Like right here, I have two variations of this particular bottle. I have design A and design B, and you can see they're a little bit different. Okay, so let's see how we can do that. Going back to this bottle here, I'm going to go ahead and save it, and I'm just going to save it as uh, E18, and I'm just going to do uh, label it B. All right, what you can do is you go up here to the Configurations Manager. And first of all, we have our default here. Let's rename it, just click on it. And I'm gonna type in Design A. And now I'm gonna right click at the top there and add a configuration and call it Design B. Now you could put in a description as well. Um, you could put in uh, inverted, uh, sweep, whatever. I'm just throwing something in there. Okay, so now what you do, you go back to your feature tree and you could suppress what, like for example, this sweep here, I'm gonna go ahead and click on it and find suppress and it will just suppress it out of that one particular thing. Also, we'll suppress that split line. You don't wanna delete them, just suppress them. And now it kind of takes us back here and let's go to the front plane again, start a sketch and go normal to or to the front view orientation and let's use the spline tool again and in this this time I'm going to go ahead put it in follow the contour and have it go out through the bottom there and hit escape notice I'm drawing these out so they're a bit farther out than what looks like they'd have to be the reason for that, sometimes if you have them, in, if you don't miss, if you miss the edge, the silhouette edge, right here, that's a silhouette edge, it uh, might not trim it how you'd expect it to. So let's go in here. There we go. Okay, so now that I have that, and beware, you don't want to edit sketches for configurations. That could cause trouble. You want to suppress things and then go ahead and edit. You, if you have dimensions, you could edit the dimensions and it will go per configuration will vary but in this case this is a different kind of a different feature so once I have that now I could go back to insert and curve split line select the body and hit the green check now you're probably wondering well what about the other side we'll just wait we'll mirror it across once we get it done so again we could go to the front plane here start a sketch and let's say we want a little bit different complexity here we don't have to have a circle Maybe we want a polygon of some sort. So let's say I went like this. Now there's some issues with twist control that you have to tinker with if you're gonna do something like this. So just be aware. I'm not gonna fiddle with it though right now. Okay, so I have that. I'm gonna to go to um, hit rebuild, sweat boss base, select the profile and the path. And here you could see as it's flowing along there. Notice there are some options here too. Um, you can actually merge tangent faces to get rid of that little thing, tangent propagation. We don't really need it. It's going all the way around. Um, as, far, as far as this, so you could keep normal constant. Uh, in that case, when you don't see the preview, it failed. It was just too complex to do it that way. 
And now here it seems to have really thrown it off considerably at the base there. So just be aware, um, profile, go maximum twist, specify twist value, you can put in degrees. Um, let's go ahead and specify direction vector. You can do it that way. I'm not gonna, I don't have options. For, uh, I'm not gonna go through all these. And then there's tangent. And that actually, I think that looks pretty good. I like that, the tangent to adjacent faces. I think that's gonna work really well. Okay, so I'm gonna hit the green check. And that seems to have done the job. And now I'm gonna to go to the fillet tool. Sometimes you might have to fill it after you do this, but let's go ahead and give this a shot. Select that edge, that one, that. And let's see if we could mirror this all across in just a moment here. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and select the sweep and the fillet and select the right plane as our mirror plane and let's go to mirror and we should see a preview if you hit the green check don't panic if it gives you an error message like right there rebuild errors that's because the complexity there's things that it's not able to bring over select geometry pattern and that sometimes helps and in this case it did and so there we have a variant of the bottle and let's go now over here to the configuration manager and we should be able to see design a should bring us back to the original and there we have design B and you have to be in the feature or the area that you want to modify it first if you do accidentally modify or make a change in uh, in one of the other configurations you could always go and suppress that that particular feature in those configurations so you don't have to redo it necessarily anyhow so that pretty much concludes this exercise as far as um, some of you might ask about the rendering most people at this point no rendering is pretty easy but the way I got the multi colors in there was um, and that may not be optimal but I, I'll just show it in case someone has a question I go over here to the model and I went with plastics and well, let's go with soft touch I'll go with um, I'll go with red in this case but then you could go over here and change the color Hit the green check for some reason these sketches sometimes turn on you have to go back in and hide them and then we could go over here and make sure rendering tools is active the way to make sure you go to SOLIDWORKS add-ins and if you have photo view 360 first select it then your render tools will show up remember photo view 360 is an add-on so some companies don't purchase that as an add-on if you want it you have to contact SOLIDWORKS and get it okay now also here select perspective now my perspectives turn very high. You could always go to view and modify and adjust your perspective. That gives you the vanishing point. Mine's set to one here, but you can see as you adjust it, it can vary. Okay, and now that you have that, um, we could take a look, integrated preview, and see how that looks. Got to wait a minute here for it to render it. The more processors you have the quicker it will render or I should say more cores okay so there we can see the whole bottle is coming out the longer we wait the better the rendering is going to be uh, be sure to turn off when you're done with it because it could still render in the background I've seen that happen before now let's say I want to change this I'm going to select this face here. Actually, you could go in and select all the faces you're interested in modifying. Let me get this one here. I'm holding control, and now you just go over here to the appearances and select face. And then you could select from a variety of things, like maybe I want high gloss plastic. Or you could go over here to uh, let's, in my case, I went with a chrome finish. And then, of course, you could change the color here or steal a color. Uh, let's see here. Oh, I should have saved it before. That's all right. Let's go over there and apply that. And 
And now I'm gonna go ahead and integrate a preview. And of course, the longer you wait, the better it will look. You could do the final render as well. This is for here. I, a lot of times, I'll just steal it from here doing a, a alt print screen on your keyboard, find the alt button and print screen that makes sure it just selects the one monitor. If you have multi monitors, that's why you hold alt. Otherwise you could just hit print screen if you have a single monitor and then drop it into a document, crop it and use it. I'll quite often do that. For professional work though, you want much higher resolution. So what you would do, you can turn off integrated preview, select final render. And what it will do is it brings up this menu here and it gives you a lot of information. You can modify and change the output and things like that. Okay. All right, also you have the ability to adjust the scene. For example, if you go to edit scene here, you could adjust where you want the floor. So if you want it flipped like that, and that's not what we want, but here I'm gonna to go to back to bottom, but you could select from those planes to do that. You could offset it. You get a lot more options here on the left. So if you want a, a black backdrop, you can do that. And just make sure you turn perspective back on and then do a integrated preview once again. And this is a multi-threaded process. So again, like I said before, the more processors you have or cores, the faster this will go. So nowadays they have 32 processors sometimes in a, or 32 cores inside some of the processors. Really nice and fast, definitely worth it. Okay, so that concludes this exercise.